Hello, everyone, and welcome to the More Cloud Fireside Chat, where we discuss strategies, initiatives, and ideas on how you can continue to accelerate and develop your cloud business. I'm Victor Baez, Global Sales Leader for Ingram MicroCloud. This is the first of many chats that are planned throughout the year. And as most cloud businesses, we aim for continuous improvement. So please take a moment to share feedback on topics that you would like us to discuss in the future, or even how we can improve the structure of this fireside chat. Also, feel free to ask questions today, post them in the chat. If time permits, we will try to get to as many as we possibly can. Now, joining us today is Greg Onoprienko, who is currently heading our platform sales in North America at Ingram Micro Cloud. Now, this is a role that he's moved into very recently. Greg, as many of you in Canada know, has been running our cloud business for quite a while and has a very interesting background as an entrepreneur. And hindsight is really a beautiful thing. So we thought that today we would dedicate the session to kind of simulate what the Greg of 2007, when he was operating and managing his managed services business, would tell a Greg today if he were still running his own MSP. So first, welcome, Greg. Uh, great to have you. Thanks very much. Glad to be here. So what have you been up to lately, Greg? Uh, new role, big event coming up in Canada. Tell us a little bit about that. Thank you. Yes, hot off the press. Um, I have taken on a brand new role with the company. Um, in my previous role, I was the, the cloud leader for Canada, director of cloud. Um, I did that role for the last uh, five years and uh, really, really proud of the success that we had in Canada. Uh, the business is booming. Uh, the channel's healthy. Uh, really having a lot of success across the board, have an amazing team there and uh, really, really proud of everything that we've built. Um, but I've taken on a new challenge. Uh, it's always good to, to switch it up and, and take on uh, refreshing and exciting things. Um, I'm proud to say I'm now the, uh, the sales leader for our Cloud Blue e-commerce platform business for North America. Super excited uh, with this new role. Um, you know, anyone who's known me or heard me speak, uh, understands that I'm a big advocate of uh, of our Ingram Micro Cloud Marketplace. You know the the fully automated platform that that drives our Ingram Cloud business. Um, I'm always preaching about uh, the integrations and, and automation that that platform brings. And uh, moving into the Cloud Blue organization enables me to do that on a, on a broader scale. And uh, really excited about the new challenge. So I just want to thank everyone who supported me in my previous role, uh, both internally, all the great people that I've worked with. Uh, I also want to thank all the channel partners that I've had the pleasure of uh, meeting and, and getting to know and, and uh, thank you for your business and, and the support over the last uh, number of years. Uh, really excited to, uh, to move into the new gig. Awesome. Great to have you still part of our family. Um, and, and what's this big event that's coming up next week? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we've got something called the Cloud Connection event taking place on uh, Tuesday, June 15th. Um, we'll put the uh, the registration link in the chat so you guys can check it out. It's it's a, an, a, an event for channel partners. So uh, check it out. We've got some great guest speakers uh, lined up. And we also have uh, what, one of my favorite things that we've uh, really turned into a, an annual event, our Cloud Partners of the Year. So tune in to that event to find out who's going to win our Cloud MVP Partner of the Year Award, our Rocket Ship Fastest Growth Partner of the Year, our Infrastructure Rock our partner of the year and our new the uh, the cloud rookie of the year uh, always an exciting event uh, countdown to the reveal and um, really you know looking forward to handing out some hardware next week awesome very exciting hopefully there won't be one partner winning all four of those prizes right but um, but anyways let's um let's go a little bit back in time Greg uh, and and you know the the, the pre Ingram micro Greg right now for most of, of the people that don't know your your full background tell us a little bit about your life as an entrepreneur and the um, and the MSP business that you owned. <clears throat> yeah, my pleasure. Um, I've spent my entire career in the in the, the tech business, uh, almost thirty years. Scary to say, but uh, but there was about a ten year stretch where I did own my own uh, IT services business. So in two thousand and four, I founded my own company called Eternity, and um, we really we started out as kind of a product based, project based professional services company, but we quickly evolved into a, a recurring revenue managed services, cloud services business. So had, had an amazing experience, um, you know, built, built that business up, um, really stressful at times. I mean, we were selling cloud services before it was called cloud. 
um, really at the forefront of it. Um, and, you know, Ingram Micro was a big part of that. We were a big Ingram Micro partner at the time. Um, and we, you know, I, I was had the pleasure of witnessing the birth of Ingram Micro Cloud. It was called Seismic back then, and it, it evolved into what today is called Ingram Micro Cloud. But we were, you know, buying a lot of cloud services from Ingram, got a lot of support from the Ingram team. Um, I had the opportunity to sit on the on the advisory council for North America for the cloud business. So I, I got I got a you know front row seat to see how this entire business evolved. And uh, really, uh, we had a successful run. Um, couldn't have had the success without the support of Ingram Micro. Um, and proud to say that uh, successfully exited that business uh, in 2013, selling the company to a, a big billion dollar cloud services provider in the US. Um, and that kind of opened the doors and, and paved the, the road for me to, to later on join Ingram Micro. But uh, really great experience running my own company. I learned a lot of lessons. And of course, it gave me some wisdom and knowledge that I can share with the, the channel partners that I've worked with today. Yeah, I would say it definitely helps you in your current role. Um, but but explain to us one thing, you know, we're talking 2004, 2005 timeframe, where as you mentioned, right, the cloud was still kind of starting up as a concept. What made you and your company want to pivot so hard and so early in the game towards the cloud business model? You know what? This is this is going to sound like an Ingram Micro commercial, um, but this is the honest truth. Um, I attended a, a workshop way back in, I, I think it was probably 06, I'm going to say, hosted by Ingram Micro. They brought Paul Dippel in. Uh, a lot of people know who Paul is, and he's given a lot of speeches and, and coaching over the years. Uh, he gave a workshop to an audience that day um, all about the the value of a recurring revenue model and and the managed services opportunity it wasn't really cloud but it kind of evolved into cloud but i i attended that event that day i sat through eight hours and i i took notes furiously and uh, i got back to the the rest of my company later that day and i said you know we've got to change our business model we were doing that you know at the, that roller coaster selling products project-based services and it's kind of a feast or famine model and um you know what paul's workshop really inspired me we kind of reworked our entire approach and our our recurring revenue business model was was born out of that workshop so um you know we we hunkered down we we kind of you know recrafted our approach as i said and started on the path to cloud services and recurring revenue and uh, and we never looked back we built a really healthy company as a result yeah, understandable. You know, when I, in my personal experience too, when I when I worked at Microsoft, we would bring partners into the Inspire event, and then you know the flight back. Uh, I happened to be on the same flight as a few partners that had just watched an amazing event, and, and then they start to redraft their business plan. So I, I can I can totally see that. Now, did you find yourself and and your partners and your associates like making trade offs, areas that you had to prioritize from an investment perspective versus others? Yeah, we certainly did. I mean, um, you know, we were used to probably what a lot of channel partners are experiencing today, still selling, you know, um, hardware or software licenses, you know, project based services, like I said. And um, we made a decision to pivot hard towards that recurring revenue business model. If I can look back in time again, back then, 07, 08, um, probably pivoted too hard, too fast. Right. Almost. Uh, almost cost us the business because we kind of shut off that cash flow that came from all those big projects um, and shifted completely to that recurring revenue model. So that was a, that was a shock to the system, uh, but it was necessary. Um, we, we were all in, we committed hard to it. And um, once we got over the hump, it, it was smooth sailing from there. But, um, but there were some tumultuous times as, as we shifted that model, but, uh, but it's the best thing we could have done. It, it, it built a, a, you know, a recurring revenue, a healthy, a predictable model that uh, really paid dividends in the end. So a lot of short term pain, it seemed right. Did you yeah. ever feel that you were not going to exit successfully or that the thing, things were not going to turn around uh, the way you wanted it to? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, there were some sleepless nights, right? A lot of entrepreneurs in, in the audience, I'm, I'm sure understand what uh, what I'm talking about. Um, you know, there were some times when, you know, you're, you're kind of uh, up, wait up late at night trying to figure out how to pay the bills, right? How to pay the rent sort of thing, right? As, as you kind of really try to get over that hump. Uh, but again, you know, some some short term pain was worth it in the end, because once you did get your expenses under your belt and that recurring revenue and that profitability starts to kick in, then you never look back, right? That that model is, is rock solid and uh, you really start to enjoy the fruits of it. 
Yeah, now now in Canada, right, and all across the globe, again, looking at where you were working uh, 10 days ago, right, at running the cloud business in Canada, you know, we, we made a pretty bold decision to move, um, you know, our entire support engine in-house, right? Um, when you were running your MSP, did you ever um, have to go through these decisions as to what you would do in-house, what you would partner, what you would outsource? T tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, so great question. Um, again, back then, um, there wasn't everything that's available to the channel partners today. So a lot of it, we had to build ourselves, right? We, we had a data center, we had to operate ourselves, we had to set up infrastructure, we had to manage that. Um, but we complemented that with uh, with services from Inger Micro, for example, right? So it was it was a nice blend of, of kind of build it, manage it yourself, but also complement it with some third party outsource services. Um, one of the pieces of advice I can give to channel partners today is um, a lot has changed. You don't have to build it yourself. There are so many options available to you. Ingram Micro's huge cloud portfolio alone can probably take care of everything that you need, uh, but no need to build it yourself, right? So many great, uh, great third party options and just, you know, make sure that you're, you're asking people for help. You don't have to figure this out. There's a lot of smart people around you. Surround yourself with them, get, get their advice and uh, just rely on third party um, help whenever it makes sense. And uh, you can do quite well, it certainly reduces the risk. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely the value of having um, strong partnerships, right? And again, without uh, running an advertisement for us uh, at Ingram Cloud, you, you mentioned in the beginning that, uh, that, that Ingram helped you tremendously, right? Um, tell us a little bit more about that, because I think it's important for, for, for some of our partners to understand what's also available for them today, right? Yeah. So there's um, certainly the, the the team back then wasn't nearly as large as it is now. Uh, I mean, today, you know, everyone knows we've got hundreds of people to to assist with any type of uh, of, of advice or, or, or business issue that they're looking to solve. Um, but certainly there was a, there was a great team at Ingram at the time that that helped me and, and provided guidance and advice. But I would say probably one of the, the, the most valuable things that I got out of that Ingram relationship was, you know, through the advisory council and just having an opportunity to meet other entrepreneurs, like-minded business owners like myself, we really shared a lot of best practices together. Um, you know, so we would get together with, with, you know, literally um, similar companies from all over North America and, you know, in a, in a non competitive environment, because these, these people aren't competing in the same city as you, you, you can't, everyone kind of lets their guard down and, and starts to really share some secrets, right? Probably not not that different from our, our Trust X Alliance that exists today with Ingram Partners and, and some other uh, peer groups. Uh, but if you can really open up yourself and, and you know, to, to other business owners and, and, and share the challenges and, and, and really collaborate, um, man, you can learn a ton. Um, I certainly learned a lot. I probably wouldn't have succeeded the way I did without um, lots of really valuable advice from from other peers of mine. So um, another piece of advice I would give is is you know don't don't be too focused on you know revealing your competitive secrets. Kind of let your guard down a little bit and share, and, and you'll get some great advice back, and it could really help your business out. Yeah, I mean, there's this is definitely a proven pattern, right? In the power of communities, of ecosystems, and 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 sharing uh, whatever makes sense to share. Now, when you were back um, as an entrepreneur, right? Which again, we at Ingram have a ton of respect for uh, people that bet their own capital, their own livelihood on their business. It, it's really something that's incredible. Were you um, already thinking of an exit plan, or were you just kind of like, hey, I'm going to run this business? As long as I possibly can. What what was the game plan that you had in mind back then? The plan was was certainly to exit the business at, at one point in time. Um, I mean, the, the you know the, the tech industry is uh, is you know um, fraught with mergers and acquisitions. Um, so you know I didn't have any delusions about passing the business down to my kids or anything of, of that nature. It was the the plan was always to sell it. Didn't know exactly at what point in time, um, but the, the timing worked out perfectly, um, you know, coincidentally for us. But um, yeah, the plan was to sell it. And, um, you know, kind of, you know, we, 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 we had a bit of a blueprint in mind. So, um, we, you know, and, and I would give this advice to anybody who's maybe in, in a similar situation, you know, planning to sell your business at one point in time. Um, I would encourage you to sit down and, and, and build the plan, right? Um, talk about um, mm -hmm. the, the, the type of, company that you you may want to approach 
uh, to acquire you. You want to, you know, decide on um, the, the type of structure of the deal, what you're looking to get out of it as a, as a business owner. Are you looking to stay on afterwards? Are you looking to exit and move on to something different? Um, what are the plans for the staff? You know, um, you know, is it going to be, you know, a share or an asset type of deal? Like there's, there's a lot of questions that um, it's, it's very prudent to sit down in advance and figure out what that perfect deal looks like, right? And that way, when an opportunity presents itself, you can kind of compare uh, the offer to kind of what your perfect scenario is, and you can decide pretty quickly if it's a match or not. So uh, that's, uh, you know, that, that was my experience. It, it worked out. Uh, the timing was good. The numbers were, were good and um, opened up the door for other opportunities for me, like the Ingram Micro. Career. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, congratulations for what you, what you did before and, and and what you're doing now. And you know, and as I said earlier, hindsight is is a beautiful thing. So when you look back, what is your your biggest regret or your biggest mistake that if you could go back in time in a time machine that you would have done completely differently? Yeah, you know, I I mentioned the the, the pivot too hard too fast. That was the lesson that I learned back then that we should have probably. Um, held on to the or, or just you know made the transition a little bit more slowly um, but I wouldn't necessarily give that advice today because we're in a different world um, many more different options and and you know the, the the technology business has has really matured since then so probably a mistake I made before but I, I'd probably give the exact opposite advice today um, pivot hard pick you know pick your pick your horses pick your solutions and and really drive hard and uh pursue what you can be very very good at so let's fast forward to um to 2021 um in your role that you were doing about 10 days ago um and and in talking to all of our canadian um ch channel partners which are our amazing partners that we have what are a couple of pieces of advice that you would be giving right now um so that they can capture the um uh, the incredible growth opportunities ahead. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm biased in in you know uh, having a built a career in the cloud business, um, but I would certainly say uh, this as a service thing is here to stay, right? This is not a fad. The world is yep. shifting and shifting really fast to as a service. Uh, so the first piece of advice I would say is embrace the as a service model and and shift your business, transform your business to to adapt to it. Um, you know that that's the first thing the other thing i would say is and covid kind of really taught us this over the over the past 12 months um there were a couple of areas uh that really emerged as as huge opportunities right certainly anything communications as a service as the entire world went uh home to work uh needs for you know video platforms and communications really really exploded uh, so that that is an area that's still hot, still really critical for us to conduct business globally. Uh, cybersecurity, right? Again, with people going home, um, lots of cyber threats. It was already a hot thing before, but uh, certainly really, really important these days. And the third area I would say is uh, infrastructure as a service. Um, there's there's more desire now than ever before to remotely manage data center workloads. And so people don't want to drive to a data center anymore. They couldn't get to a data center for many, many months. And if that didn't wake people up, I don't know what will. Um, you know, managing remote cloud-based uh, workloads is the way to go here. So uh, those are three huge areas that, that emerged. Um, my advice would be to channel partners, embrace as a service, pick one of those or maybe two at the most of those areas I just mentioned and really go hard, get specialized, invest, get skilled up and, uh, that, that will bring value to your customers because every business around the world is looking for those things. And if you can uh, distinguish yourself as an expert in those spaces, you'll be very, very successful. So embrace as a service and focus aggressively on, on differentiation, right? And, and yeah. skills. Yeah, that sounds like a very, very uh, um, important advice. Now, um, we've seen quotes from, for example, Satya Nadella on how, you know, I can't remember the exact Time frame that it uses, but somewhere something like two or three years of of digital transformation happening in, in two or three months, right? Mm -hmm. Fifteen months or sixteen months after you know the, the whole pandemic began, this seems to have materialized, and it seems to continue to be a trend, right? Totally agree. I mean, um, I don't know if anybody's paid attention to the Microsoft stock in the last year, but it's exploded, right? All the cloud-based um, uh, companies are doing well. Google. Amazon doesn't matter. Um, the cloud is absolutely exploding. 
the transformation was already happening quickly. It's it's absolutely accelerated um, as a result of the pandemic. Um, and that trend isn't going away. Like I said, as a service is here to stay. So uh, you really got to understand it, embrace it, uh, maybe make some decisions to shed uh, non-predictable, less profitable areas of the business to really go after this as a service opportunity hard. Yeah, it seems that the companies that thrived uh, in, in this pandemic were companies that had a strong subscription, uh, as you said, right, a predictable um, revenue base uh, as part of their business, right? Now, before we wrap up, let's go a little bit into some maybe a little bit more personal stuff, right? So, you know, 15, 16 months, um, a lot has changed. Um, what do you miss the most, right, from, from the pre-pandemic days and that you're maybe looking forward now uh, for us being able to do again? Um, I mean, a couple of things. Um, being face to face with your colleagues, certainly something I think that a lot of people have missed. Um, lots and lots of benefits to working from home. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan. Um, as, as some people know, Inger Micro's previous culture was not, not really a work from home culture, it was a work in the office all day, every day type of culture. And um, I know a lot of people have really enjoyed um, working from home and all the freedom and flexibility that that brings. Not to mention that we've been highly productive working from home and, and we, you know, we've posted record results. Um, so anybody who thought maybe working from home was not going to be good for our, uh, our financial well-being uh, was proven wrong. But um, working from home is great, but also you, you miss the energy, you miss the face-to-face the -face interactions with your colleagues. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to getting back and, and being around people in a, in a live setting again with, with a nice balance, right? Work from home part of the time and, and work in the office and, and pick up on that energy and collaboration that only face-to-face -face, uh, interactions bring. Uh, the other thing I'm missing is uh, the events. We attended a lot of great events. Cloud Summit was one of them, right? We always had the Ingram Micro Cloud Summit in a really spectacular, uh, warm, beautiful place. Uh, you know, the, the the trips to Vegas, the the you know the trips to Seattle to see the Microsoft headquarters, and and a lot of other, um, you know, a lot of other industry events where you you not only get to go to some really cool places, but you get to see your your customers and your vendors and all that mingling live as well. Um, that's the stuff that I miss. I, I, I enjoyed the nice break from the travel when I'm, I'm ready to get back at it again. So uh, anxious to get back in the saddle. Well, the Cloud Summit, Ingram Micro Cloud Summit is coming back, right? It's it's planned for 2022 in May uh, in, in sunny Miami. Uh, it will be hot, but it, it and it'll definitely be sunny. Um, another event coming up, which is online, is the event that you referenced earlier in, in our conversation, right? Connection uh, yep. coming up next week. Um, and with that, I think I'll, I'll wrap up the session, Greg. And again, thanking you for, for the very, very valuable insights. You know, we at Ingram Micro Cloud have a ton of respect for, for entrepreneurs uh, across all of our partner uh, ecosystem. It's really, really incredible how, how these companies have tr thrived uh, through decades and decades in, in the business. So thank you again uh, for your insights. Thank you to all of our partners in Canada and around the globe for their business and count on us to continue to help you thrive and, and, and grow and improve your business. Sounds good. Good luck, everyone. Thank you.